begin with international organizations now after the collapse of soviet union that we have seen there was a huge restrictions of the international organizations and that was mainly to cope up with the upcoming challenges of the new superpower and that was united states so role of un security council got enhanced now how this un came into establishment and how league of nations dissolved we would understand that in a while but the whole idea about understanding the international organizations is whenever we are talking about differences that exist maybe in your family maybe with your pi groups what happens is quarrel or war is not the only solution we have to have a peaceful coexistence when it comes to your family you cannot just keep on fighting day in and day out if there are no mutual uh, agreements that come into play there has to be a peaceful resolution for the same and same happens when you have nations across the globe so obviously for all of the things there won't be a common point of agreement that would be there but war is not a meaningful solution so bringing in peaceful coexistence is one of the major functions of these international organizations we have seen united nations which was established after the second world war has played a leading role but still in many of the circumstances for example the recent lebanon crisis in 2006 united nations failed to meet to its objective however despite of all failures all upheavals that have been witnessed it is considered as a ray of hope for progress of humanity now you have various organization united nations is one of those international uh, monetary fund then you have world trade organization you have the uh, Uh, international atomic energy agency mnst international human rights watch all of those are working towards a peaceful globe now let's talk about an example of international monetary fund we have international maritime organizations as well so international monetary fund we have nearly 184 nations with top 10% of the nations having 55% of the votes so just 10% of 10% of the nation having 55% of the vote and which are the nations who are members of G8 Saudi Arabia and China US alone has nearly 17.4% voting rights so very significant proportion of voting rights have been seen by a limited proportion of countries similarly when we talk about the uh, the international agency for atomic energy we see atoms for peaceful purposes not not for nuclear war amnesty international is meant for protection of human rights under un declaration of human rights and making rights as interdependent and indivisible so focusing that government is not doing a misconduct to the common people so those are the kind of uh, various organization and then of course human rights watch that is a kind of ngo working forward but all these organizations are working for the world to have a better place to live in now what is the importance of these international organization first of all it's important to understand that these international organizations are not super states it is not just the authority of few members that is there but yes it is created and developed in response to the various states and the development that comes into being with the creation of those states unfortunately sometimes we fail to recognize the objectives for what it is created so maintaining and understanding why it is created and the response of each of the states helps us to maintain a better and a peaceful world so important idea is to resolve the problems peacefully have peace dialogues things must be done together there should be uh the goals which are beyond the human rights so there could be issues related to let's say epidemic spread or disease and if everyone works together definitely those could be eradicated from the society uh we can have environmental concerns like global warming ozone depletion so cooperation of all the nations developed or developing is required for the same similarly ideas and information for cooperation is must so what happened was during the cold war it was uh, a kind of uh, 
सुपर पावर्स रोल दैट वॉज गेटिंग डॉमिनेंट अक्रॉस द ग्लोब एंड अ मेजर कंसर्न आफ्टर द कोल्ड वॉर वॉज दैट देर माइट बी सर्टन वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज विच वुड बी लेड बाई माइट बी यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स विच कैन बिकम पावरफुल एंड कैन सप्रेस द अदर नेशंस एंड इफ दैट हैपन्स देर इज नो चेक so to maintain this check international organizations are important and therefore the role and the importance of united nations came into being so there has to be a mechanism under which these international organizations can develop they can have a cost sharing basis where all the uh, cost is being divided fairly and the benefits are also divided fairly among all of those and then uh, certain members would agree to the terms and the conditions would join it some would join some will will join with certain conditions and some will join without conditions so there could be various ways under which we could understand but when we understand this we see that after the first world war you had league of nations that came into existence however after the league of nations we witnessed second world war and you had numerous people that died got wounded and this was the worst time in the history then ever so with this amount of tragedies that happened you had united nations that was established and that was after the second world war now this united nation initially was signed as a charter by 51 states and it was believed that this body would be able to prevent any further international conflict if that occurs and to bring in cooperation among the member nations also in case of war ethnic conflicts or hostilities that occur this body would be able to curb those immediately and bring in socio economic development even in the drought trodden areas of the world so with this objective united nations was established now united nations general uh, general assembly all the members have one vote right now one vote right is important because in the next uh, section we would understand the various components of united nations and their security council is one of the important components now let's cover that first so under security council you have 15 members five are permanent members and 10 are the members who uh, basically are dissolved every two years so these five permanent members have a unique negative veto what does this mean even if one of the members says no then that thing cannot be passed now what are the five permanent or who are the five permanent members so you have us russia then you have china france and then you have uk as the five permanent members however there has been an upcoming debate as to countries like germany brazil india which are emerging powers must be taken into account and with the changing changing world the other nations should become part of the permanent council or the permanent member should be increased in number so there has to be some change that needs to be brought about and that is for the betterment of the world because if there are if the world is being maintained just by the few superpowers it could prove disastrous in the future go with that idea there has been a constant pressure on united states uh, united nations to bring about a change or a reform in the existing policy that was established when uh, united united nations was established now uh, you also have the uh, general assembly and then you have the secretariat so the secretary general uh, we would understand the series of secretary generals who have been there and their roles in uh, curbing the various issues and checking out the progress which have been important but a uh, important one of those was ban ki moon and ban ki moon was from south uh, korea was an asian and he was one of the first asians rather to hold the position after 1971 so those are some of the key highlights now coming on to un there are two major reforms that are being thrusted for first is changing in changes in the organizational structure the structure as we said the permanent and the non permanent members this structure must be changed there should be increase in the number of permanent and the non permanent members in the security council and the second is the review of the issues which fall under the jurisdiction of the organization so increase the number of uh, the issues that fall under 
their jurisdiction so those two are the basic ideas that we need reforms in united nations now as we said the components of united nations we have already talked about the security council the first one of those coming on to the international court of justice 15 judges are appointed for a period of 9 years and it is headquartered at hague then you have the trusteeship council it was suspended in 1994 after the independence of palau and then ever since then you do not have uh, the trusteeship council economic and social council basically talks about a three year term with 54 seats and this is allotted based on a geographical representation. Security Council 5 permanent and 10 moving members for a period of 2 years uh, that we have already uh, studied. Then we have General Assembly you have the 193 nations which are part of United Nations each having one vote. Now in most of the cases simple majority uh, with a simple majority the decision is being done however in certain cases two-third of the majority is required for any case to have a final decision and then you have the secretariat secretariat is headed by the secretary general now we would have the list of secretary generals of united states united nations sorry uh, over the time and this is for a period of five years renewable term so it could be renewed so you have the first general secretary trevi lee now he was from norway and his important developments was creating a ceasefire between india and pakistan on the issue of kashmir however he failed to end uh, the Korean War and there was uh, the there was a severe opposition that was seen from Soviet Union during that time. The next Secretary General was Dag. He was from Switzerland and he uh, sorry not Switzerland Sweden and he basically talked about firstly the resolving the Swiss Canal dis dispute and he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1961 just at the time when he was during his last durations. He also was known for settling out the Congo crisis. The next is Uthant. Uthant was from Burma and he basically resolved the Cuban Missile Crisis which was one of the major crises. We have taken a separate lecture on Cuban Missile Crisis. He also resolved the issues of Nambia, Lebanon uh, and he was involved with various peacekeeping forces. He criticized United Nations for the Vietnam War. The next was Krut Waldheim. Uh, he basically was again involved in the issues of Lebanon and the relief operations going in Bangladesh. He hold, uh, He basically was from Austria. Then you have Xavier. Uh, Xavier was basically from Peru and he mediated between Peru and Argentina on the Falkland Island dispute and then the Nambian War of Independence. So those were the major developments that were seen when uh, Xavier was the General Secretary, Burtas Burtas Ghali, a well-known name uh, heard by many of you. He was hailing from Egypt. He had numerous peace agendas. Uh, his UN operations in Mozambique, uh, invasion on Iraq being declared as illegal were some of the major developments that he had. Uh, he has been known for. Kofi Annan was again one of the major names that we have heard about. He created a global fund for eradication of AIDS tuberculosis, malaria as some of the major diseases. Also, he declared the invasion of Iraq war as illegal. He uh, followed the Human Rights Council and he was awarded Nobel Peace Prize in 2001. Ban Ki-moon, as we said, he was the uh, longest duration of uh, period where he was seen as an Asian uh, being a secretary general and his most important contribution was working for violence against women, uh, working on anti-poverty, millennium development goals and uh, peace initiatives. The last was, uh, the last, the present one is the Antonio and he is the only person to be born after the creation of United Nations. So interesting and then he hails from Portugal. Uh, he did a leading role in the outbreak of uh, the Hathai uh, cholera that was seen and also the Rohingya persecution. He played a major role in that.
so those were some of the major issues that have come across each of the secretary generals of united nations now its reforms in the security council as we said are important so what should be the new criteria for establishment or uh, as a member of united nations uh, security council a person must be an economic and a military major power must be a contributor to a un budget must provide financial support uh, the nation should be big in terms of population must respect democracy and human rights and should be able to provide diversity in terms of geography economy and culture now india interestingly is meeting all of those criteria and therefore india says that india should be definitely a potential member of security council now security council no longer represents the contemporary political realities its decisions reflect the western concepts or the western values and there is lack of equitable representation so these are the claims that people usually have or complaints usually have for the security council that it is highly influenced by western values it is not equitable representation of powers and there is no longer a kind of contemporary political realities that are there however the reforms are indeed important and kofi annan let the ideas how big economic powers basically wish to qualify for and how some of the populations are trying to protect their rights in order to trying to protect their rights they are not allowing the other powers to enter into and therefore there has been a constant conflict about not entering or not letting enter other nations as a part of security council so india as we said has been working hard to be part of the un a uh, security council as a permanent member now negative veto what is it now there are five permanent members as we already said those are we repeat again us uk russia then you have france and china now these members if any of these members say a no to any of the bill that bill stands invalid or that decision cannot be taken into account with a single no by any of these permanent members and this can stall any of the decision that is about to take place now this negative veto is usually considered as good because this would uh, check undue instances that could occur but on the other hand it is highly and highly dangerous to the uh, freedom of the world and certain values or certain cultures could be phased out because the involvement of certain bodies could prove ineffective now if we look on to the peacekeeping map of un we have seen that across the un we had various issues through which un has been working for now hatai uh, hathi then you have the liberia issue the burundi issue the ethiopia and so on the ceasefire between india and pakistan pakistan as we have seen uh, so there have been various issues through which un has been working for its peacekeeping operations the next is regarding the jurisdiction the idea is to create a peacekeeping uh, mission to accept the responsibility of the international community establishment of human rights council this was done in 2006 develop or reach the mdgs or millennium development goals uh, condemn any and all form of terrorism that exists create a fund for democracy and to basically wind up the trusteeship council so those are some of the basic ideas which are laid under un as we said india and un reforms have been important india has been one of the leading nations to promote development cooperation pr provide finances maintain peace and security uh, has has always questioned the static nature of united the security council and has always supported the increase in the number of permanent and the non permanent members in the un security council also india has been always working for expansion so in 1965 we have seen the expansion of the security council from 11 members to 15 members that took place however there was no change in the permanent member even then this was the change that was seen only in the non permanent members that were there and the size of the council remains stationary even now india being the second highest in terms of population and having one fifth of the world's population should uh, be a permanent member as claimed by india and we are one of the largest democracies across the globe 
we have made significant contributions to the finances of un and therefore uh, there is no reason why india shouldn't be a part of the permanent uh, shouldn't be a part of the permanent member of the security council but the uh, parties on the other hand would say if india then why not brazil why not germany why not japan or south africa so there have been constant debates around it but yes role of united nations need to be revamped in the case of the unipolar world where you have certain superpowers gaining their importance and you have economic and military powers in the hands of few it's very very important that the role of un must be expanded to curb or to control this right away uh, also there are certain reasons associated to it united nations is physically located in washington within united states and therefore it is one of the reasons where you have the considerable influence from united states that is seen also united states is one of the biggest contributors of un we have seen the veto power that has existed with the permanent members of the security council but overall we can say despite of all the peaceful coexistence and all the measures that have been taken so far united nation still has room for improvement it's not a perfect body and but without it on the other hand the world could have been worse and off if united nations was not there so definitely connection and links are important it is a right time to understand how developments and progress has occurred under united nations but at the same time reforms in united nations are needed for a successful future also we are focusing on technology as one of the major interface interface to bring in interdependence within the nations and this would overall improve and increase the powers and the expansion of united nations so that was about the international organizations mainly united nations how india is performing a leading role to become one of the permanent members of the security council of un and what have been the stakes and the ideas that we have been propounding we would be covering many more interesting topics in political science stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead